I will let Mitch go ahead and introduce himself. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, currently in North Wales as hacker in residence at a hackerspace here in rural England. Oh, well, uh, Wales, I don't like being called England. And uh, I was just hacker in residence at a high school in Beijing um, for three months teaching high school kids. And um, I go all over the world doing talks and workshops. I'm an inventor. I created a keychain called TV Be Gone that turns TVs off in public places. And that got me internet famous and uh, invited to lots of things. And you know, I, don't know. I love doing stuff like this. And I love helping people any way I can and mentoring people with their projects is one of the things um, I love doing. So if I can be of any help, I'm, I'm glad for that. Awesome, thanks Mitch. Um, and I realized I didn't introduce myself, so I'm gonna do that quickly, um, just so you guys aren't like, who's this person? So my name is Magenta Strongheart. I work at Supply Frames Design Lab in Pasadena, California. I have a background in industrial design. And if you don't know about the lab, we're a 4,000 square foot design and fabrication facility where we help um, designers and engineers and residents develop hardware products. So you're welcome to um, uh, email me or ask any questions afterwards. Um, if you're curious about that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but otherwise, we'll keep moving along. And I'm helping with the prize, of course, this year. Um, all right, so Matt, if you wanna get started in, uh, with your drum machine project. Cool, sure. Um, so hi everyone, and hi Mitch, thanks for, um, yeah, thanks for helping out with this. It's, uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying Wales. I'm, I'm in the UK, so not too far away. Um, so this is my, uh, um, all right, so this is my drum machine um, that I've been making. This is a sort of early 3D printed prototype. Um, the idea is it's going to be a sort of um, performative kind of drum machine. So rather than key, keying in a rhythm um, and pressing start and then just it going on its own, the idea is that you'll constantly change the rhythm um, as, as you use it. So I've got a breadboard demo set up that I can show you guys. Um, so um, here we go. So this is this is what the drum machine currently looks like on the breadboard. Um, these buttons here will, uh, and here will correspond to big chunky buttons on the final project, uh, and these three knobs will correspond to three knobs on the final project. Um, so at the moment you've kind of got a start button. Um, and then each of these knobs will uh, change a different element of the sound, like change a different element of the drum beat. Um, and so the um, the idea is that uh, you're kind of, you're acting as kind of as um, if you're like the conductor of a drummer. Um, so it's sort of halfway between having a drum machine and having a having a drummer. The idea is that it's um, uh, like a really interactive thing where if you're controlling it, anything. Oh, hey, I'd like to do a drum fill right now. You only have to change a couple of um, parameters on the drum machine, um, and it will do that. Um, it's supposed to be a sort of, it's, it's based on an Arduino, um, so it's going to be a fairly kind of hackable um, uh, sort of project, um, releasing everything open source. And um, yeah, I've, I've currently got to the stage where it, it kind of works, but uh, I'm starting to hit some problems with, um, you know, making the, keeping the audio nice and clean. Um, um, I just got to the stage of doing my first ECB um, for it, which I just ordered from China, um, but I'm having a couple of, couple of minor issues with that. So um, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I've got to at the moment, uh, briefly. Um, do, does that all make sense? Sure. Yeah, it make, makes perfect sense. It's, it's really cool too. Thanks. Cool, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I had a couple of questions that um, that, that I thought we because I um, uh, Mitch, as I was sort of um, 
doing some research about about what the kind of things you do, I came across your um, Argue Touch um, synthesizer. Yeah, which seems to have um, I only discovered it today, but it seems to have quite a lot in common with this design in that it's uh, you know like a, a kind of Arduino, but not really you know um, using the 80, 80 mega three two eight chip. Um, so I've, I've I've been through a bunch of problems trying to power this off off two batteries. Um, I sort of thought that four batteries is too much, and uh, well, three batteries would be not enough power. But I saw that you just put three batteries in, and it does, does, so can you just power that um, power that chip off three batteries, and it works fine? Is my first very specific question, I guess. Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, the eight mega three two eight works on anything between two point seven and five point five volts. Okay. So, um, Two volts or two batteries will work fine, but then you don't have a lot of leeway as it goes, uh, as they go dead, um, as they lose power. So three batteries, you have, a, you know, it, it works for, I, I never actually tested or even calculated. I just figured that's four and a half volts nominally. So, and it, yeah. on mine, it, uh, I, I had no regard whatsoever about power consumption. Maybe I should, yeah. but, uh, it lasts for like weeks on, Three AA batteries. Okay, well that's really cool because I mean I, I I did mine with a <laughs> I did a, like the most expensive component in it is this um, little battery manager chip thing which takes two batteries and boosts it up to five volts. So I'm <laughs> having having now seen your design, I'm starting to think that's completely uh, uh, <laughs> like unnecessary, which is really uh, might might be a useful thing in that next um, next iteration. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you can just get rid of that and use three AA batteries. Totally yeah. fine. Try okay. it and see how it works. I think you'll do fine with that. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Um, and it's a slightly more general question that I had is that I'm, I'm quite new to designing um, uh, like PCBs. Um, and something I haven't quite got the hang of yet is that I'll, I'll have a design on the breadboard um, and then I'll want to make a PCB out of it. So I, I do a layout in uh, KiCad and uh, this is the third PCB I've ever designed, and uh, two of those I've made mistakes with. Um, and uh, obviously, when you then make a mistake with the PCB, is, that adds on quite a lot of time to your development process. Um, uh, I was just wondering if you have any kind of tips for <laughs> how to not make. Yeah, well, that's part of the process of learning. Uh, PCB software all sucks. There's just no way around it. And um, uh, the only way to learn is by doing it and see your mistakes. And of course, you can rework the board by hand. It's kind of a sure. pain to, just to make it work and then iterate the board. Fortunately, uh, it's not very expensive to iterate. It just takes time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And KiCad, there's, um, you know, what have you been using the supply frame uh, or, or Chris's um, tutorials? Um, I think I was using uh, this guy called Sean Heimel. Um, I'm not sure where he's from, but the, the, he's got a good good set of tutorials on them. Uh, on them, but, cool. um, yes. You know, Chris Chris Gamel, who used to be part of Spy Frame, has some really good um, tutorials. Oh, okay. Cool. And and so I'm I'm fairly new with KiCad myself. I I've used the Eagle for many 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 years, but now that they have their horrible um, uh, uh, monthly payment kind of a thing. I, it's just like the hell with them. I, I'm only using PCAD now. So I'm sure, a yeah. beginner too. And there's a learning curve. It's just, it's unavoidable. Uh, if your board is super simple, you can use uh, fritzing, which is way yeah. you can use. It's just from um, uh, your um, solderless breadboard directly. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I use that for making my breadboard um, illustrations and things if I'm, if I'm trying to just make, sort of demonstrate it. But I've never tried to use a, um, to actually make a, you know, make curves with it or anything. But um, that's, yeah, that could be useful. Yeah. So, KiCad, if you're doing that, that's, that's real software. So, you know, do that. You're, you're learning a lot and you'll be able to do other cool projects after. Okay. Cool. Um, so, but it essentially is just sort of a, it's a kind of an inevitable part of it that you make mistakes, you rework the board a bit, and then when you figure out what the mistakes are, you just go again uh, with another that's, prototype. Unfortunately, yeah. that's it. No, 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 that's cool. <laughs> it's just good to know what the process yeah, is. You're not, you're not, it's not like that you're a total dork. I mean, you might be a total dork. I'm a dork too, <laughs> but uh, it's, that's not the only reason. 
yeah okay cool um cool um and i've got no idea whether it's um, another question i add which i've got no idea whether you've got any experience of but, um uh, so I, I made the first prototype because i happen to have a 3d printer so i, I made it out of that just because it's a really quick way of um of building a prototype but um you know i figured like for my idea is that i want to make you know sort of small batches of these to sell um is the idea you know starting with you know sort of 10 or so and hopefully you know getting up into the into the you know 100 or so if it's successful um so you know kind of small numbers but the i've just been trying to think of a way to make a case a bit like this um in greater numbers and the, the best way i've come up with so far just ask, after asking on twitter and things is um uh, like laser cutting layers of wood or plastic and, and putting them together um do you have any other thoughts about you know how you could you know what, what sort of methods you use for making a simple case like like this uh, in, in in a small to medium kind of size yeah so coming up with a case is not easy that's a, a whole project in and of itself and um uh you can do it the like the professional way is to have some 3D software, um, like SolidWorks is the professional one, but there's open source tools that are free as well. And, um, and then making a mold, uh, a tooling. And, but that's super, super expensive to make. So I don't think you wanna go that way unless you're gonna make you know, 10,000 minimum. So no, no, no. I like the idea better. of just write it quite quickly. Yeah. yeah, so doing it with 3D printers might be a good way to go. And uh, most 3D printers are pretty low resolution. Um, that might be good enough for you. Uh, if you're just doing 100 total, if you're doing hundreds, that's going to get old. Sure, yeah. So um, laser cut might be better if you can come up with a way of making that work that's mostly automated. Yeah. Have some okay. but, work in. So, but essentially that is just a, it's a sort of difficult in between space before you get to high numbers that, you know, there's, it's just hard to come up with a good solution for that uh, at low numbers, I guess. Yeah. So um, 3D printing is filling, filling a pretty good niche for doing that kind of volume. You know, like TV Be Gone, this is, this is the, the original on what's still sold as a keychain. And that one is much smaller than yours. Doing the tooling, uh, I had a friend do it who charged me very little for his time. And then the tooling itself cost about $4,000. So, it, and that's small. So if you did that, you probably don't know all the software, you'd have to learn it. That's a lot of time or pay someone. Yeah. And, uh, and then the tooling would be Mm, maybe even like eight to ten thousand dollars if you get a cheap place to do it in China. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of what you'd be looking at otherwise. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. No, that's, that's useful to know. Just... On the IO. <laughs> oh, sorry. Find, so... a, find a collaborator on the IO who wants to build your case. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you have um, any experience with 3D modeling software? Um, only that I, I, so I won a, um, a competition last year, sort of make a competition where the, the prize was just um, uh, about two thousand dollars worth of, of things from a um, electronic store in the UK. So I, I got myself a three D printer then. Um, so I've been playing around with it, um, you know, the last six months or so, and just um, using I think is it FreeCAD? I think that's the one I've been using, but um, it's, it's still kind of a learning process. Okay, well, if you're interested in like taking that on and starting to learn more about 3D modeling, we um, at the lab, we super recommend the um, Autodesk Fusion 360 software. It's pretty um, comparable to uh, SolidWorks and I came from a Rhino background, but both of those are super inaccessible unless you're gonna make a career out of it. So yeah. um, we love uh, Fusion 360 because people can come into the lab, learn on that and then leave and still be able to access it pretty um, for pretty inexpensive for they have different um, you know scale for prices based on how many if you're a small business startup with a certain level of number of employees or if you're a student or different things like that so um, I'm sure you could get a, a free um, uh, license for that and um, and it's super robust and great for great CAD CAM combined package so 
recommend it. And there's really great tutorials um, online on YouTube, free, free tutorials for that that are great. Oh, cool. Thanks. That's really helpful. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then another thing I thought of just as far as the in-between, um, you know, maybe producing or 3D printing something yourself and then um, thinking about having to invest in tooling for um, larger scale manufacturer. There are a lot of, you know, sort of service bureau, bureau type places popping up that you can submit your file online and ask for a, a smaller amount of, um, of finished, you know, cases or something, products um, sent back to you. They are, again, pricier than um, doing it yourself and uh, but not, you know, there's not as high of a quantity um, minimum. So that's another option too, if you're really looking to get um, uh, past the 3D printing it yourself phase. Um, but yeah, it yeah. depends on what your investment level is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, I'm trying to make something really s small because this is kind of my first like product type thing I've, I've ever worked on. So I'm like the, uh, yeah, I'm sort of trying to reduce the risk of like having an all or nothing huge. Yeah. Totally. Can, can I ask a question? Can I interrupt? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, what about CNC routing and wood? I, I mean, are you looking for these to go uh, on tour with people, or is it going to be something that you know the environment uh, isn't going to be so harsh? Because it looks like you can CNC router uh, some uh, stacked up plywood and then just put a top and bottom on it and call it a day. Laser cut the yeah. top uh, for your um, or again, CNC router the, the top plate uh, and then just assemble it uh, as such. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. I mean, certainly with laser cutting, like, um, do, do you know the, the uh, Pi Bow case, like the, the Raspberry Pi case where it's, um, it's basically made of stacked um, laser cut layers. So that was kind of one inspiration that I was, where I was thinking you could basically just cut each, I mean, either laser cut or like you say CNC rather yeah different layers the wood thing cool and it'd be I guess you could make it more sustainably than if it was plastic which is cool so um yeah I don't think I, I think it would be there are definitely you know sort of boutique kind of uh, musical instruments of this kind that are made out of wood so I mean I, I don't think it would I mean if, you, yeah, if, you, if you're talking yeah. about that you know that that 20 to 50 range it, it seems like that's that a possible way of doing it yeah yeah no, no, yeah, I mean, I'm just, at the moment, it's, it's because it's not something I've ever done before, I'm just kind of trying to see whether these are things yeah. that people, other people have done. So anything where, like, if you're suggesting that, you know, that might be possible, that's, really, that's just... I'm sorry, we're going to have to... Um, someone else is saying, you know, yes. Sorry, we're going to have to cut you off and go to the next person. And by the way, I wasn't over time. We're just, um, we get a little extra time since Field Kit isn't joining us, so... Um, everyone will get a little bit over the 10 minutes, closer to 15 minutes. Yeah, let, me, let me just say one last thing. With the, yeah. So um, what, what you're doing is, is, is awesome, and I think a lot of people will want it. So keep, keep doing what you're doing. And, um, I, uh, and if you need help, um, like manufacturing, I have connections there, and there's a, a for, for you to try. And there are a whole bunch of other people. You can go with someone you feel good about if, if you see that people want them and you want to make more. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, thanks very much. And yeah, thank, thanks for all your answers and, and how that's, that's really useful. You're welcome. Cheers. All right, so Slavin, if you want to introduce your uh, agricultural monitoring system. Hello, everyone. Uh, I come from Croatia, from Europe, and uh, I'm developing this device for almost Year in a year and a half. Uh, this device uh, is based on uh, Atmel Atmega 328. It's uh, basically Arduino Mini Pro. But uh, after first version of device, I uh, use all components for for my PCB. Uh, also wireless connection is based on LoRa communication. Uh, th this device have few sensors. Uh, it use BMA 280 for temperature and humidity. Also sensor for soil and uh, leaf wetness. Uh, 
for now I uh, also a few days ago I made uh, on 3D printer my uh, screen for for sensor and the uh, next step is to uh, upgrade my microprocessor because uh, at mega 328 is uh, not powerful enough and uh, doesn't have enough uh, inputs and outputs so i want uh, some advice uh, what next uh, microprocessor to use i think think about uh, uh, stm8 or sum 21 or do you have some advices to, to for me about that yeah so um um well before I, I do that so you've got sensors on the input what are the outputs uh, all the all, all data from sensors are sent to my gateway and the uh, gateway is connected to internet and everything is uh, saved in the database and displayed in our dashboard oh so there's no automatic um, outputs like for providing water or fertilizer or for now they, there is no but bar but we uh, i'm developing also as part of this whole system i'm developing a device that uh, will be able to uh, will have some kind of wall for water and water pipe so uh, farmer can can put some parameters based on soil moisture to, to automatically turn it on and off, or uh, the device will also have a LoRa module, so it uh, will be able to turn it on and off remotely. Yeah, makes sense, cool project. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is, idea is to uh, enable farmers to, to have uh, some data and measurements from their fields so they will be able to uh, predict disease appearance, uh, manage irrigation and uh, get more data so they can uh, make the actions on fields more smart and smarter to reduce costs and uh, other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, what makes you say that the microcontroller is not powerful enough? Uh, this Atmega328 uh, uh, doesn't have enough inputs and outputs. Uh, I, almost, I spent all, all the inputs, pins, everything, because uh, these two sensors, because I uh, turn on and off my sensors with uh, transi transistors. Uh, so I need uh, some pins for control transistors as a switch. Also, some are inputs and outputs for sensors. And uh, I uh, have uh, just two or three pins for maybe one more sensor. But I will need more sen more pins for other controls and everything. Yeah, now I get it. So it it's not that there's not enough processing power. Yeah, just enough I just want to say that it is not in speed. So I, because of that, I think about STM8 and maybe not STM32. So speed is not uh, necessary. I really need low power microcontroller because uh, with this setup, uh, in when in a low power uh, condition, device uses around two to three microamperes of current yeah and so LoRa is really good for that and yeah. then an 18 mega isn't so good for um going into low power mode is still fairly uh, a bunch of current that it draws so i'm yeah. not familiar with st uh m8 um i've been looking for my own project my music synthesizer to use an stm32 but i haven't been looking at what the power consumption is like so, uh, but, but the cool thing with the STM is that it's still Arduino compatible. So you just download a board file and then you can still use the Arduino software. And that's might be good for you as well as for other people that want to hack on it. Yeah, that's really impor important for me because uh, LoRa library and the library that I use is really complicated and I didn't develop it 
because uh, it's really, really, really big, and uh, so I need some microprocessor that uh, I would be able to uh, use or code that I already have and libraries from Arduino ID. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, I know the STM32s actually are, are fairly inexpensive, um, and the more powerful ones, uh, computing power of powerful, um, are not all that much more than uh, 18 mega 328. So the STM8 is probably cheaper, and they have zillions of pins. Of course, if you use that, you'll need to have a PCB the, uh, that you know, and soldering on the surface mount is going to be yeah. somewhat challenging. Yeah, I understand that. I already did that. Uh, I put uh, all my, I'm using uh, at Mega328 in uh, small SMDs and uh, I burn bootloaders on it on myself and uh, I just ordered the new new PCB, new version of PCB. So, so everything is now uh, SM, all components are SMD. We, I have just a few connectors that are true cool. Awesome. So you're not a, a newbie as far as that goes. It sounds like you're set. Well, I started uh, really. I started uh, one one year ago. One year ago, I uh, never used uh, soldering iron. I never used uh, eagle before, and you know this year ago was uh, hard work. But uh, I see some improvements in my knowledge. And uh, cool, you learn a lot in a quick time. Uh, well, a year, yeah. It's, so you've been working on this project a lot over the year. Yeah, really a lot. Uh, yesterday I had some international startup competition because all this project uh, grew to something like startup. So I won first place in competition of 30 teams. So uh, a lot of uh, time I, I spent all my free time. I'm a student of electrical engineering. I'm on fourth year and uh, I have some, uh, every day I have to go to college, but uh, I'm trying to to take my time and uh, wa waste it on, on something good. <laughs> well, keep doing that. So yeah, I think uh, STM8 might be a, a good way to go if, if it has the number of pins you need and it has a good um, low power mode. Yeah, they, they have uh, some uh, 48, uh, pins package and and I think also some 64 uh, package so 64 pins package so uh, I, I didn't uh, google it enough maybe but I, I want to hear someone uh, other advice I, I also saw that at, uh, Atmel has uh, some 21 it is on their uh, other fruit uh, feather and, and uh, some boards like that so maybe some of you have, have more experience in, in some of these no, well, if you're if you're going to make uh, a bunch of these um, it's probably better to go with another manufacturer besides the Atmel microchip because um, they don't really uh, go down in price with volume because they don't make them and uh, distribute in China so yeah. much so um, but ST does and you know for the choice of microcontroller for you should really be um, uh, just on ones that have the spec and the price you want because the computing power is it, you don't need much computing power you just need IO pins and a good um, power low power mode and if if the ST goes slowly then it'll use even less power while you're using it and if it has a good low power mode then it's like uh, you know, and wakes up and does some LoRa communication, which is super low power. I mean, you're, you'd be set. So I don't think it really matters what microcontroller you use, other than what I yeah. suggested. Okay. okay. One more. One more question. Uh, I'm using for now Leon uh, 18650 batteries and the 26650. Uh, do you have some advice in uh, what uh, voltage regulator can I use? Uh, I also ordered from from China some batteries that I that are this size and uh, they are not rechargeable, but uh, they're uh, 
working specification is from around uh, 3.0 3.0 voltage to, to 3.6 so i i need a 3.3 at output so do you has do you know some uh, voltage regulator that is uh, that have a step up and step down converter well i don't think you really need um step up step down if you use the lipo batteries the 85 650 is that the name of those batteries yeah. um or just regular lipo batteries like the ones used in cell phones um and like zillions of other things that's nominally 3.7 volts and uh at, at full charge it might be up to 4.2 yeah, and microcontrollers all work at that range, and so you can go way, way, way low and still provide power for your microcontroller. The main thing is uh, your sensors, which I don't know anything about. So, but it, it's good to avoid the um, the added circuitry of step up, step down if you don't need it, and that that provides some more inefficiencies. Yeah, and, uh. and cost. Yeah, I'm I'm using now some um, MCP7000. Uh, it is a really low power consumption. It, it takes just uh, one microampere of current of dark current, so it is great. But uh, idea is my idea is to make device that uh, doesn't need any solar panel because I want to make it a farmer just take it and put it uh, he, if you want in, sh in sun or in shadow so so doesn't have problem with that and um, it's easier to use some batteries that are not rechargeable I found some with 19,000 uh, milliampere hours so it's really big but or they say that so uh, they, they use smaller voltage so I talked about to use some some voltage regulator so so i can use it under 3.3 because th this voltage regulator will switch them from 3.6 to 3.3 but they are if they go low i will lose maybe in 50 percent of battery or something like that so yeah that makes a lot of sense so yeah it sounds like you're doing the right thing then um, having non-rechargeable batteries and then you only have to change the battery what like every two years or something yeah I'll just need to find some voltage regulator that will do do what what I need uh, yeah so uh, I don't have enough experience there to recommend a specific one for you um, I, I haven't done that myself so sorry I can't help you specifically with that yeah um, and uh, I really don't know any other question. Do you know maybe just from uh, for production uh, or supplying or components? Do you know from China or some uh, beside uh, the key Mauser and other big companies? Do you know some company or where, where I be able to, to get some more information about if I go to to more production? Right. So. <clears throat> You know, you can buy components way, way, way cheaper if you go AliExpress or even cheaper yeah. Taobao. But the problem with doing that is um, you don't always get the same thing, even if you go with the same supplier. So if you're doing prototyping, it's good to go with DigiKey or Mauser and a regular distributor, um, you know, or Element 14 or anything like that. Um, and then when you're thinking, if you, you're like, what quantities do you think you want to make of these if things go super well? Well, I don't know for now. I, I, I have already 20 orders and I didn't even start with, with selling it. So maybe in future I'm thinking about, thinking about a few hundred at least. I, I really don't know. Yeah, so a few hundred, there's places like Seed Studio, who can do small production runs like that. And they have a set of what they call their standard parts. And um, if you look on their website, you can see what those are. And if you stick to those, that's also good even if you don't go with Seed Studio, because those are just really common parts that are super easy to get and inexpensive in China. And they're spec'd out, so you get the same thing every time. And you might need a few extra things to make your sensors 
Um, so it's good to have standard parts. And then if you want to go with a real contract manufacturer, like if you're going to be making thousands in the future, then it's good to get connected with a contract manufacturer early in the game so that they can recommend the parts that you design in that will be um, inexpensive and have not super long lead times yeah, when you go production. Okay, thank you for all these advices. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you, Slavin. All right, um, and last but not least, Joseph is going to be talking about your Pilates reformer. Yeah. Um, uh, First, uh, anyone familiar with Pilates? Uh, what it is as an exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Pilates is an exercise that was developed by uh, Mr. Pilates, uh, end of the um, uh, early 1900s. Uh, he died 1967. Um, if, you're, if you looked on, the, on my project page, uh, you'll see what a reformer looks like. Uh, this is purely mechanical. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing to be plugged in here at all. But let me say, um, thank God for Hackaday, because it was about 2004 where, where the last time I was on here, uh, and I had just made uh, maybe the first Apple tablet, uh, and I think we crashed the servers, because it, it was one of the early projects that they ran. So it was fun. But this, purely mechanical. So the day is this, uh, the issue is this. Um, usually these units cost about $5,500. There's only about three manufacturers in the States uh, and there's only about maybe a three or so others uh, uh, globally. Um, it's not a large uh, in-demand item, but, but, um, it's just a phenomenal exercise. The, the theory quickly is um, you build the muscle around the spine. Uh, the discs uh, are no longer just passively compressing under gravity. Uh, the muscle actually allows some uh, buoyancy uh, and some lengthening of the spine so that you have muscle uh, actively separating. Uh, you don't just have this uh, pressure uh, on the discs and consequently uh, on the uh, nerves. So, so it's a good exercise. I teach Pilates um, and I also design things. Um, so the point is um, I've wanted to break down the whole idea of, of what the design is, um, try to make it as affordable as possible to manufacture, trying to make it ship broken down uh, and uh, every other manufacturer out there is derivative of what Joseph Pilates had designed uh, in 1922. Um, there's, there's a couple of tough spots in here though. Uh, Pilates instructors normally come from dancer backgrounds. Uh, they have finely tuned uh, senses uh, of, of body placement, of feel. So they are not at all receptive uh, to changing anything, um, they have phenomenal sense of, of, of proprioception, of, of feedback in their body. They do not have a mechanical sense whatsoever of how things work and how things are assembled. So they're a hard audience to actually speak to about these things. But, but, We've broken down the design, we've eliminated all of the welding, all of the custom fabrication, uh, and we've really just kind of turned it into a keyer for uh, Pilates equipment. Um, uh, we have people in Nicaragua, people in Jordan, people in um, uh, Sweden, uh, who would be happy uh, to be able to have something available to them that could ship broken down that they can get up into a studio without getting a forklift or whatever uh, and set it up and be able to move it uh, when they have to. So, so I, my design pretty much addresses all of these things. Um, and if you haven't read the whole report, uh, in theory, it breaks down and can be shipped in a 10 inch sono tube, uh, everything fitting in uh, that 10 inch by seven and a half foot, you know, eight foot long sonotube 
uh, you could practically drag it in by yourself. Um, I could actually put some wheels on the bottom of the solder tube and you could just wheel it in like a, uh, like a dolly. So, so that's the idea. Um, I've already got people working out on it. Um, uh, there, like I say, uh, I built it all myself. Uh, no machine shop. Um, there's only about three uh, fabricated uh, parts to it. Um, everything else is pretty much off the shelf. Um, I've got like price list. Uh, roughly, we're talking maybe seven fifty, a thousand dollars for um, for the materials. Um, skill for assembling uh, in terms of production is practically non-existent. Um, it's cut and pipe uh, is really all it is. Uh, and it's, uh, it's all speed rail fittings. So, I mean, it's a real hack. I mean, it, it, it's a real hack. Um, but it feels good and it feels right. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to be uh, in the company, uh, we count them as friends, uh, some of the foremost teachers, um, and they've been on it and, and they like the way it feels. Um, and that goes a long way for these people. So. Uh, as far as questions, if I knew what questions to ask, you know, I, I could figure them out. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's the idea of not knowing what questions uh, to ask. Um, I, can, I can churn out 10, I could churn out 20 of these on my own, uh, you know, cursing the whole way, but I can do it. But it's really that question of, you know, how do you get to 100? How do you get to, you know, 200? Um, and how do you develop, uh, you know, the, the support in the background that allows you to kind of push that forward? That's, that's the, um, and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a mess, you know, I mean, getting something in the mail, returning a phone call, I, you know, bad at all those things. Give me a screwdriver, I'm good. But, so, so that's the, that's the tough spot. Um, so if you have any insight, uh, feel free. Uh, one last thing, the trickiest thing about this, and I, it's only it's only because I'm working in a shop by myself. But you know, I'm cutting the wheels by hand. Uh, and if you see uh, in the picture in the gallery there, um, I jigged up a, a, a router attachment uh, that goes onto a shaper, a wood shaper, and I cut the groove. So even that's manageable. Uh, I mean, I could churn out again. I could churn out a hundred of them if I had to. Uh, but but it's figuring out how to move into that other direction. So go ahead. Uh, I, I I learned more from asking from you asking me questions. So so feel free. Sure. So um, uh, you're saying you could do a, a few hundred on your own. So I, I take it that I could do no, the wheels. The wheels I can do. I mean I, I you know I mean I could probably you know four sets of wheels per unit. Uh, if I was going to do, you know, 30 units, you know, I, I could, I could probably uh, squeeze that out. Um, okay. You're thinking uh, you, you'd want to make, I mean, there, you're, you're feeling like there's a market for a lot of these things and maybe selling thousands of them around in the world, maybe? A price point um, is an issue. Um, but I think, again, I think as, as something as a broken down kit where, 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 you know, a plumber on the other end could assemble it in no time at all. Um, uh, it doesn't take much more skill. Not that plumbing is, is, is unskilled, but, but it doesn't take, it, w it wouldn't take anything more than the Allen key. I mean, we really modeled it after a keyer. Um, so, um, built into the uh into the shipping not built into but uh, as part of the the package will be a template the supports uh that you uh put one on top of the other and it will keep everything at the same height and hold it so that you could put the fittings on so i mean you know you, you could one person could get away with doing this um but uh yeah i think there's a market for it yeah uh yeah uh, nothing 5500 really no kidding 5500 is about the price uh and people wait 3 months 5 months to get their unit in studio because you know the people manufacturing are doing this all by hand 
in in a very cumbersome manner. I mean, I know the manufacturers too. So, um, and I've approached them, and uh, and none of them want <laughs> none of them want uh, to deal with it. For the most part, uh, they have seen increases of orders, you know, 20, 30 percent for them. Uh, and they can't keep up. They don't even want to introduce something new, uh, let alone if it might compete against. But but they're happy where they are. They don't see any need to change anything. Uh, and there's a monopoly on the market. Sounds sounds to me like you've got to find another um, manufacturer that can do this for you, and not necessarily one that has anything to do with Pilates because they don't really matter as long as they understand what you want and do, do it in a way that uh that, that your follows your vision because you know it works and yeah. um like uh, my my experience is manufacturers in china whether it's mechanics or uh or electronics or even fabric um and if you're going to do a lot it might actually still make sense even with the guy in the white house doing what he's doing with china um but uh, <laughs> let's not go there right now so um uh yeah so uh if you're going to do a lot it might make sense to look at some places there because you're shipping all over the world anyways and you can even do the fulfillment service in china since um people are willing to wait months for wow. receiving these things if they have to. Uh, shipping from China is a little bit slower uh, if you do fulfillment there rather than just a container full. Yeah. Um, but it, it might not be a problem for you. And if you are gonna make like a thousand of these, um, yeah, I, I know some people, like my manufacturer probably isn't the right match for what you're doing, but he might know people I could ask and that could be a good start for you to try. I don't know if you're interested. Well, I, I mean, one, um, I mean, the, the, the issue is, uh, the first issue is startup, you know, so if you're talking a thousand of something right off the bat, I, I mean, that, 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 that's a financial outlay that, that, that becomes, uh, you know, tenuous uh, for us. Um, I have uh, some discussion with the manufacturer of the fittings themselves. Um, uh, not the the U.S. importer. They're, they're manufactured uh, over in uh, in the U.K., um, but um, the importer on this side um, had some uh, has some interest, uh, and I'm I'm seeing uh, because they I'd be getting the fittings from them. I don't think I don't need to manufacture the fittings myself. Well, let's, um... Since we're, we don't have much time, let me let me let's take a step back because the manufacturing stuff. It sounds like you have enough information of, of how to proceed there. You just need to like ask a bunch of people and find something. So you're really good at design and like making prototypes. Uh, marketing is another story. So uh, putting out into circles. Um, I mean, you have some connections with the body, yeah. which is really good for a beginning. Um, so finding someone helping there, but also finding someone who can do the logistical kind of things, the operations. And um, so here we have with Supply Frame and Hackaday, there's a whole bunch of really cool people and um, people know people who know people. So putting this out on user forums might be a really good way to go. And to get someone who's also way into, like you way into Pilates, um, and has their heart and soul into this because you don't want to just work with some some schmo who's just a business guy because they only care about money and you care about <laughs> enough Schmoes, but, schmoes make the world go round though. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, this is your life. So you want someone who gets it. Yeah no, and, and Absolutely. Okay, so this is true for anyone listening to me right now. Do not work with someone you don't like and that means manufacturers, it means business guys, it means vendors, it means customers. It will come back to haunt you and you will have to hire lawyers. And even if you like the lawyer, you won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that valid, valid, thank you. Yes, very true, very true. Uh, life is too short. Why, why work with people you don't like? 
Exactly. And as long as you're making enough money on the project that you've got your heart and soul into to keep you doing what you're doing, then you're fine. Well, I mean, it's, it's a whole, I mean, this is one of, of uh, 12 apparatus. I've already have designs on all of them. Uh, this is the most complex. Uh, and so I figured, let me get this one out first. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, there'll be plenty, uh, there'll be more to come. It's just, yeah, getting that marriage as to the support people, logistics and otherwise. Yeah, um, so you definitely need help there. And we all do, you know, running a small business is super, super stressful. And, but the, the rewards are very great as well. I'm, 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 an, I'm unemployable. I've always worked for myself. So, so, so. Understood. I'm with you there. <laughs> uh, probably all of us here. So um, I would guess so. I would guess so. All right. Well, thank you so much, just, um I think we'll just wrap up with a few announcements. Um, unless anyone had like two minutes worth of anything else anyone wanted to say, I want to give time in case people wanted to um, mention just, anything else to each other. Just appreciate everything you're doing. I mean, in, in, in all honesty, it's just phenomenal to create the environment. Uh, and to be able for someone to, to have money to kind of get things moving, uh, that's just a blessing. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Being a role, you, the whole uh, Hackaday Prize and everything has been really, uh, I was in it last year and it was really opened a lot of doors and things. So it's been really cool. Thank you. We really appreciate that. It's always awesome to hear feedback from you guys like that um, because we really want to make it the best it can be for you all. And it, it is really.